Let's pray. Lord, what a perfect song to enter into our time of celebrating communion, to proclaim what you accomplished at the cross. Lord, I pray that you would just bless this time, that it would just bear much fruit in our lives. And Jesus, it is always in your great name that we pray. Amen. For our time celebrating communion this morning, we're going to be in God's word. And we want to make sure that everyone has a copy of God's word in their hands. So if you do not currently have a Bible, go ahead and raise your hand and some men will come forward and they will be handing out some of God's word to you. This morning, we're going to be in John, what we just read but specifically in verse 17. So John chapter one, verse 17, go ahead and turn there, please. And as you're turning there, I want us to think about a question. What is grace? What is grace? A.W. Pink says this, divine grace is the sovereign and saving favor of God, exercised in bestowing blessings upon those who have no merit in them and for which no compensation is demanded. Nay, more, it is the favor of God to those who not only have no positive deserts of their own, but also who are thoroughly ill-deserving and hell-deserving. It is completely unmerited and unsought and is altogether unattracted by anything in or from or by the objects upon which it is bestowed. Grace cannot be bought, earned, nor won by the creature. If it could be, it would cease to be grace. When a thing is said to be of grace, we mean that the recipient has no claim upon it, that it was in no wise way due him. It comes to him as pure charity and, at first, unasked and undesired. The section of scripture that we already read this morning from the first chapter of John, verses 1 through 18, the Apostle John clearly details the glories of the incarnation, how the preexistent and eternal God came to earth, where the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And here for our time in communion, we're going to further consider how Jesus came to earth for the purpose of going to the cross. We're going to consider the absolute and eternal free favor of God called grace. Please follow along as I read John chapter 1 verse 17. For the law was given through Moses... Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Verse 17 says the law was given through Moses. The Mosaic law is good and perfect and holy. But the law does not and cannot save. The law reveals our inability to keep the perfect standard of God's law. It shows us our sinfulness and ultimately judges us and condemns us. The law points us to our need for a rescuer, for a savior. Go ahead and look at the rest of verse 17. It says, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. The grace that came through Jesus Christ is the free gift of salvation the atonement, the propitiation, the wrath-satisfying sacrifice for sins. It was the wrath-satisfying sacrifice for sins for the undeserving, for the ungodly, for the rebellious. This salvation was accomplished when Jesus Christ went to the cross and suffered the wrath of his Father as a substitute in the place of sinners. He received the penalty for all those that place their faith and trust in him, in him alone. Without grace, there is no salvation. Grace came through Jesus Christ. 
So that begs the question this morning, have you received the grace of God? Have you received the grace of God in salvation or are you trying to do your own law keeping? Producing your own works? This is the time in our service when we celebrate the Lord's Supper. This is the time that we get to remember corporately the death of the Lord Jesus Christ and the cross. And we get to proclaim his death until he returns. And to do this, we take a little piece of bread and we take a little cup of juice and we get to celebrate his body that was given and his blood that was shed at the cross. The Lord's Supper is only for believers, for those that have repented and believed in the Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of their sins. So if by your own admission, you say that you're not a believer, then when the trade comes by, we simply ask that you would let it pass. This is, this is meant to be a family time for those that are followers of Christ. We're excited that you're here. We're excited you get to hear these things, these truths. But you need to know this. You will be judged by God. You'll be judged by the perfect standard of God's law. And you will be found lacking. And you'll spend eternity suffering for your inability to perfectly keep his law. You need to be rescued. You need to be saved. And that's what Jesus Christ came to do by grace through faith. If you have any questions about what it means to be saved by grace through faith, come talk to me, any one of the other pastors, the person who brought you. We would love to tell you about how you can be saved by grace through faith. Believers, this morning I want you to consider the magnitude of the grace as detailed specifically in this section of scripture that we already read this morning. This section of scripture says that God, the preexistent, eternal creator of all things, dwelt among us, came to earth, stepped into his own creation for the purpose of going to the cross. He did this so that he would rescue sinners that were unable to save themselves, to be their substitute, to do what they could not do to do what only God could do. We deserve nothing good. We rightly deserve the absolute and eternal wrath of God for our sins. How wicked and sinful is our sin that the only solution is that God would step into his own creation and suffer and die at the hands of his own creatures. And because of what he accomplished, because of what he accomplished at the cross, we will not experience one drop of the Father's wrath for our sins. But instead, we get to be with him in heaven and we get to see him face to face. What? grace. What grace that came through Jesus Christ. What sovereign, absolute, and eternal grace. Believer, when your heart is prepared, please go ahead and take communion on your own.